All right, today, Chris Froome finished eight minutes down in the Volta Catalonia. A lot of people messaged me and said, is this it? Is this Chris Froome's, like, is he gone? And I've been quite reluctant to make this video, to be honest, because I back himself. Um, and I think he's had a really tough time, obviously, in the last couple of years. Uh, and also, um, I've had quite a lot, a very similar experience, having crashed about a week after him and doing many, many similar injuries. So I don't want to be too harsh on him because it's a tough time for everyone involved. Um, but I think at this time, it's relevant to make a video uh, in my opinion, about what he is, what his future is. Um, okay, so first of all, we're just gonna go into his crash details. So he crashed on the 6th, sorry, the 12th of July. June, sorry, can't do maths. Uh, June, and he fractured femur, pelvis, ribs, elbow, neck. Um, I think he might have done, yeah, sorry, that was all of it. So, pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, really, really horrendous crash. Um, I crashed a week after, more or less, and did leg, uh, wrist, brain, back, so I'm cheating, but that's really count, and some ribs as well, but so you can basically see me and him, similar crash, similar crash, and I don't want to compare myself to Chris Room because obviously he's about a billion times better than me on a bike ever, but I think the progress is interesting in comparison in some ways, because people were saying that he was progressing too quickly and he hadn't crashed, and you know, all the, all the ridiculous conspiracy theories, which is obviously wrong, but so he basically started like riding a bike relatively early on in like, I think it was September-ish, he started riding a bike. Um, and at that point, like I could ride as well, to be fair, more or less outside. But like my numbers were horrendous. So like for reference, my threshold was 333 um, at like 60 kilos before I crashed. And then when I got back on the bike, like 200 watts was like 200 beats a minute, like full, full gas. And I was like really struggling. But for me, like the main concentration was just obviously getting back to being a normal human. Um, and Chris Froome, to be fair, like, did, said similar, like, he was like, my goal is the Tour de France next year, which is, like, a bit crazy, um, because obviously there's a lot of issues that you need to rule out when he's had such a big crash. Like, it's not just the physical side. It's not like he broke one thing, and that's the thing, like, they call it trauma because you've had so many things happen at one point. So it's not like he can just, you know, oh, I've just broke my femur. All I need to do is work on that. It's like you've got so many things happening at the same time, and he also had a lot of metal work, which I did, but he had a lot of it taken out, which means more and more surgeries. Every time you have surgery, it's bad. It means you can't do rehab, etc., etc. But he seemed to be in a wheelchair a lot longer than me. It seemed like he couldn't walk. I think he had a lot more issues. Well, for me, they just sorted the metal out, broken two. They whacked it back together and said, "Get on with walking, son." I was like, "Alright." Um, so as soon as I got intensive care, I was walking around. But I think for him, it seemed like it really took him quite a long time to walk again which was obviously really tough for him. Um, and then he started pedaling a bit. But for me, I think it was very odd that he set himself such an aggressive comeback. And I know people say, and I'm sort of a fan of it, like if you set a really aggressive comeback, like, oh, I'm gonna be ready in two weeks, then you're not gonna be ready in two weeks, but you're gonna be way closer than you would be. But having said that, I think in the long run, it doesn't always make sense. Like I was like, really wanted to do National Hill Climb Champs that year, it was in October. And I was like in hospital, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna do it. And I could have done it. Like I raced a hill climb in September and did 280 watts for 10 minutes. And it, like, that's not very good for me. But, you know, the point was, if I'd focused all my energy on getting fit on the bike, then, you know, my rehab would have been rubbish. And I've learned that over the time. Like, I can now run and I can now am back to normal. But it's taken me, like, a year and a half. Obviously, corona hasn't helped with physios being closed, etc. But, like, I think in some ways, maybe that was a slight mistake for him targeting the tour, where, in reality, he should have just gone, all I want to do is become a perfect human by X date, and then we focus on the bike. Obviously, he's still going to ride, but the big goal is you know, getting the left-right balance back to where it was, et cetera, et cetera. But instead, I mean, I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying, this is my opinion. Obviously, I'm not a medical professional. I'm just someone who had a similar issue and wanted to get back to the top of the condition. And now I'm pretty much at the same condition as I was before. Um, my threshold is like 320, but that I tested a while ago. I reckon it's pretty close to what I was. I'm actually lighter now than I was before as well. So despite many, many metals in me. But anyway, that's irrelevant about me. It's more about Chris Froome in this video. So, you know, he's had all these issues. He came back racing. We're going to go over to his racing now. So he raced in February, which I think is mad, mainly because surely not all your bones have healed. It takes a long time for all your bones to heal properly. But anyway, obviously he was anonymous. I mean, UAE Tour, as I've made a video before, is a joke. It's so easy to get around apart from like Jebel feet. And to be fair, he actually did quite well. Like, no joke. He finished 59th. Like, that's actually quite good. Like, he'd been, like, a decent amount of people. Like, you know, he finished 
on the same time as Amador, Carlos Rodriguez, Omar Fraile, and Visconti Bataglin. That's actually really good. Like he, I think he was quite fit then. And then like obviously Rona hit, so no racing. Then he did like uh, Route del Citani, didn't really perform. Tour de Land, he looked better, but he wasn't doing like crazy numbers. Obviously I would have shared you power numbers, but my video seemed to have scared him off. So he doesn't do power numbers anymore. Dauphiné again, like just domestique roles. Terreno didn't do anything. Went to the welter again, completely really anonymous. And to me, I think most people gave him the benefit of the doubt. Like, you know, it's very hard with Corona having all the physio stuff that he needed, etc., etc. And my big belief as well was that when he had the whole time off, like in between seasons, he could just focus 100% on rehab, get 100% perfect, which I think is good because he didn't have any priority on the bike. And I was convinced that this year he was going to come back and whack it. And then if we look at, on this um, stage, so we have the TT, which I don't know if he just doesn't go in full gas in TTs, but if I was him, like every time it's a TT, you've got to whack it. Um, he finished 40th in Jebel Hafi, and then up Jebel Jais, he finished 42nd, which is like, okay, he finished 59th last time and all the rest of it, five minutes down. So you're like, okay, that is quite a lot. But um, we'll go now to Jebel Hafi on stage three. And like, where was Chris Froome? He finished like 40th, I think. Five minutes down. So like, I don't want to be rude, but he hasn't actually got any better in a year. I think that's quite conclusive to me. Obviously, you can say a lot of stuff that he wasn't going full gas, etc., etc. But like, and maybe he's targeting to the tour and he's not in top condition. But come on, you're not putting five minutes back on Adam Yates in like, and Pogacar in like, th what, four months? Like, come on, no one's that stupid. Like, no one can do that. Or five months, it might be. You can't put five, like, that's, nah. So, I'd like, I don't get it. Like, he's just got worse, I think, or the same, in my opinion, in the UAE tour. And maybe people will say he's working on the front and all the rest of it. But I'm like, he's Chris Froome. You're paying him five and a half mil. Just let him race. And then this one as well. It's actually a really easy climb, this, to draft, because it's just, like, 5%. And he didn't do too badly but he did lose a minute and 40 and if you look at like the people he lost time to like Mateo Sobrero like he's good but he's not outrageous he lost time to Luis Leon Sanchez Ruben Guerrero they're all good guys but they're not like you know absolute world beaters I mean Jeffrey Bouchard had a good ride like Florian Stork Louis Meinkies has been him I mean it wasn't great and if we go on the TT I, I just assume he's not trying on the TT because there's no way he should be getting binned by the people he was getting binned by um and then anyway we'll we'll go over to t the today's stage because this is obviously why I made the video um and yeah just 8 minutes back but like he was struggling so much on that climb and for me like it looked like okay maybe his numbers were there I went over them a little bit I should have done it more because I didn't realize he was going to take it down in LA I'm like, yeah, he looked good, he looked good, but he wasn't like, oh, wow, he looks outrageous. But, like, he finished eight and a half minutes back today, but he just looks like he was so, like, not as skinny as he should be. Like, he looked like he was, like, pre-2011 Chris Froome. I'll put a picture up, because that was not a lean Chris Froome. And, like, I don't think he was, just seemed to be the same as he was. There's a sense he looked a bit, a bit sketchy, which is obvious when you crash a 60k an hour into a wall, you know, it's not ideal. Um, as I can attest, and he can attest as well, because it hurts. Um, but eight and a half minutes down, like, finishing, you know, with, behind people who are, like, good, like, but pro Conti people are, like, binning him, and you're just, like, like, I don't get it, like, it's not like, okay, yeah, he's building form, et cetera, et cetera, like, no, because think about when he used to go up, he turned up to, like, Jaco Harold Suntour and would bin everyone, then he'd, like, turn up to, like, Romandy and bin everyone, turn up to Tour of Alps, bin everyone, Catalonia, he might not have been everyone, but he'd be up there in the like, top 10, easy. And I'm like, I just don't think it's going to happen. So now I've gone through his race results this year, you might be thinking, okay, fair enough. And I don't think it's the crash. I think it's his age. Because, as I said before, like we both have very similar crashes. I'm pretty much back to where I was before. Took a long time, year and a half, pretty hard work, but pretty much got back to the same thing. And like obviously we didn't have identical injuries, but I'm very, very close, like 2 3%, which, okay, I know in the pro peloton is quite a lot, but it's not five minutes, is it? So we can, like, you know, you know, but the reason I think Chris Froome is not going to win the tour, he's not going to come close to winning the tour, is because the level is so much higher. Like, if you think about Chris Froome, so he started in 2011, 
when he won the world, the world and he's now won the world. Like, obviously, he was, like, peaking. 2015 was probably peak for him. He'd been Quintana, like, a minute up, uh, up, what's the climb called? I, anyway, they released the power day on it. Uh, Pierre de la that's the climb. 40 minutes, he did about 6.2, 6.3 watts per kilo uh, in the tour. Mad scenes. And, uh, you know, tw 2016, he was, like, okay. 2017, he was okay. Like, he obviously won the tour, so, like, was good, but wasn't as dominant as he used to be. And then, like, 2018, he won the Giro, which was mad, and then came third in the Tour, so pretty solid. But, like, you know, he wasn't as crazily dominant. And you'd expect, he was, like, what, 35, I think? Or he's getting close to 35 now. Like, you're going to decline. Like, it's only natural. Like, okay, you, people always say, oh, I came to the sport late, and I understand that. But you can't expect to keep getting better at 35. And that's the issue. Is like, for him, he was already, like, you know, at his peak. So you have a crash, you're gonna lose basically two years of training, is well, a year and a half of training is basically what he's lost. Um, in terms of just like, you know, he went down so much, just so to, even to try and get back to the same level, as I've found, takes a long time. But for him, obviously his level is crazy high, but it's more the fact that like, he's gonna be aging anyway. And like, for him to keep that level, in my opinion, in 2020, 20 or 21, with no crash, I think is very, very hard. So for him to have the crash, go down the level and try and get back up, it's like, well, he's getting old. It's just not going to happen. And that's the issue, I think. I don't think it's the crash. I think, you know, I think it's the age and the crash together. If he didn't have one and didn't have the other, if he was 21-year-old, had the crash and got back, it, he would have been fine. But, and then if, you know, he had, if it was the opposite and he was just old, I still think he could win, a, he could have won the 2020 tour maybe. Like, you never know, 2019 tour, definitely he could have. He could have been the people. He would have been them in the TT and then up the climbs. Like, G and Bernal working for him, for sure he could have won it. But co combine the two, and you, you're not going to win it. And um, I feel sorry for Chris Room to be honest. Um, he's a legend of the sport. I love the man. Um, but I just think, from my, my own perspective, based on, like, similar experiences I've had in my, like, last year and a half, and also just looking at the pure watts per kilo they're putting out now, they're just obscene. And all in all... I'm just not convinced he can do it. And then that we haven't even got onto his team and all the rest of it. Like, this is just purely athletic, physical numbers. I don't think he has it. Uh, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Obviously, let me know what you think. Can Chris Room win the Tour de France? Or is it just too much? Um, is it going to be too much for him? But anyway, cheers for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.